starting, Josie? Thank you. It being 6.07, I will call to order the April 5th Planning Commission meeting. We do have a quorum of four Planning Commissioners present, so we can begin our meeting. I would um, ask you to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And with that, I welcome um, the staff members that are with us, our planning commission members that are with us, and anyone that is in our audience. I will introduce the people that you see on your screen. And I will do that as I see them on my screen. I do this so that those that are in the audience know who, who we are and also for any of the viewing public. On my screen, the first person I see is Josie Rademacher and she is with the Community Development Department. She is a staff member for the City of Port Orchard. I am Beck Ashby. I am a planning commissioner and vice chair of the commission. The next person I see is Jim Fisk, and he is a planner within the community development part, department, transitioning to primarily long range planning. Tyler McCus McCluskey is a planning commission member. Wave your hand, Tyler, so everybody knows who that is. Jacob Miller is new to our planning department, and he is also a, both a combination short-term and long-term planner. Nick, Nick, Nicholas Bond is the director of community development. David Bernstein is a planning commission member, and Stephanie Bailey is also a planning commission member. So those are the people you see on your screen. So when we speak, you will know um, who, from what point of view we're talking. Since this is the first meeting that I have chaired, I would just ask a couple of housekeeping things. And that is when planning commissioners want to speak, if you would use the raise the hand feature on Zoom or wave your hand so that um, I can keep track of you and recognize you and we're not speaking over each other. And with your permission this evening, um, I would like to use the um, unanimous approval procedure for some of the votes we take. With that, um, that's the housekeeping things that I wanted to take care of. We will have our audience comment portion. If there is anyone in attendance in the audience who wanted to make comments to the Planning Commission, and these would be for topics that are not part of our public hearing this evening. Now would be the time to do that. Again, if you use the raise your hand feature in the Zoom, um, I'm assuming it's either Josie or Nick will bring you over so that you can provide your public comment. Again, we will be holding a public hearing and those comments in order to be part of the testimony need to be taken at that time. Are you seeing anyone that has public comment for us? No? no? No, I think they're both here for the public hearing. Okay, thank you. With that, we will close the um, public comment period and go to the approval of the minutes for the March 1st meeting. Those were distributed in our packet. Is there, um, Stephanie? I would like to make a motion to approve the minutes from the, bear with me, from, oh, I've lost it on my screen. Bear with me, Beck. From the March 1st, 2022 Planning Commission meeting as written. Thank you. Is there a second to that motion, Tyler? Thank you. So we have a motion and a second to approve the minutes for the March 1st meeting. Is there anyone who would be voting uh, to oppose that motion? I will ask a second time, is there anyone who would be voting to oppose that motion? Hearing none, the motion is uh, acceptance of the minutes for March 1st, 
um, are approved with unanimous consent. We will move on now to our business items. And the first business we have is uh, a discussion on the 2022 Comprehensive Plan Amendments. And I believe, Mr. Bond, this is your discussion item. Yes, I'll give you a, a brief overview of the 2022 Comprehensive Plan Amendments. Um, <clears throat> I believe we discussed these at the March meeting as well, but we've formally put together the package that we would be forwarding to the City Council for approval. And so tonight is your opportunity to review the draft amendments and to um, ask questions in advance of holding a public hearing at our May 3rd meeting next month. Um, <clears throat> in 2022, the uh, the city put forward three city initiated text amendments. There were no publicly initiated tech, um, comprehensive plan amendments at all. The three amendments are adopting the new parks element and an update to the parks, recreation and open space plan. Um, that <clears throat> parks, recreation, open space plan would be adopted by reference. Um, and along with that, we've redlined the parks element of the comprehensive plan to refer to the new document and do some real uh, minor cleanup uh, in the parks chapter. And the, the planning commission has been reviewing the parks plan for the last year and a half or so. Um, we've had several meetings with our consultant, uh, Tom Beckwith. We've had uh, um, public participation surveys, uh, all sorts of outreach on that. And so this is uh, the final step in, in getting that plan incorporated into our comprehensive plan. The city council actually has already passed a resolution uh, recognizing the parks, recreation, and open space plan uh, so that we can apply for grants in this round of funding that is uh, the grant applications are due May 5th, but putting it into the comprehensive plan is what we need to do to make it consistent with the Growth Management Act. Uh, the second uh, city initiated text amendment is to update the city's transportation improvement program. This document has been revised slightly since the last time um, the, uh, the public would have seen it either in a council committee meeting or in a planning commission meeting. Um, <clears throat> we have color coded the tip to indicate where there are deletions, additions, and changes uh, in that document. And if you have any questions about those projects, um, feel free to ask, although I'm, I may not have all of the answers because that's a public works document that gets uh, inserted into the comprehensive plan. Generally speaking, we've received some grants or are intending to apply for grants. And part of the, the grant application process is to make sure that the project you're applying for funds to build is in your approved uh, planning documents. And so we are going through that exercise and we do this every, every year, um, moving that 26 and 20 year plan one year further into the future. The final amendment is to the capital facilities element, and it is simply to adopt the 2021 amendment to the water system plan. And um, this, this plan has been under review at the Department of Health for almost two years. We finally got Department of Health approval that, uh, that they will accept our final document. And so we are just adopting it into the comprehensive plan to show uh, consistency under the Growth Management Act. So the a uh, recommendation tonight is just to review the amendments um, and, and ask any questions that you might have prior to next month's scheduled public hearing. And we have, uh, we have drafted public notices that will go out um, unless Planning Commission feels there's a need to uh, push, push this back or study this further. So with that, I'll turn it over to you for discussion and questions. Thank you. Planning Commission members, do you have any questions or comments? Um, on the comprehensive plan amendments, the three amendments that um, the three elements that are bringing being forward. I don't want to ask my questions until I make sure that all the planning commission members have had an opportunity to ask theirs. And mine, mine are really simple, Nick. Um, mm -hmm. Because I know a lot of work has been done on the parks element. Um, my review of the changes that you made in that section, as you mentioned, were simply making it compliant with the new plan and also some housekeeping. It, it seemed fairly um, easy and easy to understand. And I also, the um, 
capital facilities, I, I believe that's been fully vetted. My questions, of course, um, are on the transportation, the tip. And I don't have a question. My first question is, has that tip that we're seeing been um, approved by the Transportation Committee at City Council? Have they seen this before we have? Actually, this is a more recent iteration. Um, the March, I believe the March Transportation Committee meeting ended up getting canceled. So they will see okay. it at their April meeting. And if something were to come out of that meeting between now and April, it is possible that we would bring you a slightly revised draft based on council input. But at this point, the department directors, um, finance director, public works director, and myself have met with the mayor and we are on the same page in terms of uh, the dollar amounts included in the project list as it stands now is, is being consistent with all of the grant applications that we are currently working on. Okay, my and so I appreciate that. So the Transportation Committee, if they have any adjustments to this, we would see that before our public hearing at the next meeting. Um, yeah, we the would, other, oh, the other, I, I would say we would we would certainly highlight that to you in the staff report if there was a change. So so you'll be alerted that to that in the packet as well as in the uh, uh, presentation in advance of the hearing next month. Thank you. My other question is a pet project of mine that is on the tip, um, but it happens to be on the longer term, the out the 20 year section of the tip. Okay. So what my question to you, Nick, is because something right now is out, and this particular item is out to 2029 to the 2034 time range. Um, can that be moved up sooner if there's funding opportunities for that? It's yes, just because it's out there, does it mean it can't be moved forward um, time-wise? Correct. By putting it in our plan, it's something that we can apply for grant funding to build. If we're successful in getting funds, each, each grant program has different timelines in terms of when the money becomes available and when it has to be spent. And we would make adjustments to the TIP in the next amendment cycle to uh, to fit whatever funding source we've secured. But right now, because there is no funding source identified, we keep it on the back burner until we identify uh, a funding source. Or in some cases, there may be projects that require other improvements to happen first. And so we may be waiting to, to replace a water main in a particular street or to build stormwater facilities for a, a particular stormwater basin before we can do things like put sidewalks and landscape strips in. And I think you know my pet project when you answered with those stormwater questions. I had um, a guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Commissioner Bernstein, please. Um, it's been a while since we've seen um, timelines or timeframes on any of this. Do you have kind of a general time frame? On, on particular projects or on the comp plan process? Actually, both. Um, well, so the comp plan process is um, you're reviewing the materials tonight. You'll have a public hearing and hopefully we'll make a recommendation to the city council next month. And then the city council would likely take this up at their work study meeting in May for discussion and could take action as soon as the second, uh, the second city council meeting of May or the first city council meeting of June. So I would expect late May, early June is when we're adopting the comprehensive plan amendments. Um, I guess in terms of projects, what do you have a more specific question? Well, particularly the tip ones, um, because I know that's going to be very disruptive to people around the community when the, that construction starts. Right. And right now, the tier one uh, project list, um, you know, each each construction project that we build, we will put up notice signs will have detour routes and we'll make provisions to ensure that people have access um, to their property. But um, yeah, it's just, it's part of being a city. Those types of projects happen. So when do you see tier one starting? Well, so tier one, if you look at the, across the top, there are, it's a six year tip. So there's six individual years and you would want to look at projects. Um, if you read the description, some things may say that it's a design or planning project, in which case there is no construction right now. If it is a construction project, and the example that I want to give is the uh, Bethel Sedgwick, or I'm sorry, the Bethel, uh, 
trying to find it here. We're doing a roundabout at the intersection of Bethel, Mitchell, and Lundberg. And we have funding, I believe that's going to go to bid um, next spring for next summer construction. So, so in that case, you would see um, uh, uh, construction in the 2022 and 2023 biennium is when the money gets spent. Right, and Dave, that's item 1.7 on the tip. That's that Lincoln roundabout. Yeah, so I think that's $3.2 million uh, listed in 2023. And so that's because we have a grant source that required us to spend the money prior to, I think, the end of the federal fiscal year in 2023. Okay. So does anyone have any other questions regarding um, the comprehensive plan amendments? What I'm hearing um, Director Bond say is that um, we will be having a public hearing at May. The council will take it up um, probably during May and June. And then I believe there's a public process is there, Nick, and, and it comes back before council um, later in the year. Is that right? For the comprehensive plan? Uh-huh. Um, well, if we need to make amendments to the to the capital facilities uh, plan list. There's a special exception in the uh, in state law that allows us to amend the comp plan more than once. And so in that okay. case, we could, we could amend the comp plan again as part of our budget process. But at this point, I expect this to be done for the year, um, hope, hopefully in June, uh, no later than June. Okay. And I'm assuming that we do not need a motion to recommend the public hearing, that that process is already underway. Correct. Okay, so with that, I believe it's the understanding of our commission that there will be a public um, hearing in May and we will not see a lot different in these documents before then. So that gives us um, until our next meeting to review these more if we choose and to ask questions. Is that correct? So with that, we will move on to our uh, public hearing. And this is a public hearing regarding um, new cell tower ordinances. And again, Nick, I believe this is your item to lead the discussion. And actually, I'm gonna have Jim Fisk handle this presentation. He's been doing most of the work on this one. Thank you, Jim. Good evening, Jim Fisk, Senior Planner, City of Port Orchard. As you may recall, the proposed wireless facilities development regulations were introduced at the March Planning Commission meeting. Since our last meeting, staff provided the draft regulations to the Department of Commerce, advertised for tonight's public hearing consistent with the procedures in the Port Orchard Municipal Code, and the City of Port Orchard SEPA responsible official issued a determination of non-significance, which is currently in its comment period. These regulations are intended to create a predictable permitting process consistent with federal and state regulations. The regulations intend to encourage wireless providers to locate these facilities in areas where adverse impacts to the community are minimal and to encourage the co-location of these facilities while allowing providers to provide these services in an effective and efficient manner. The city received comments in a timely manner from Verizon and AT&T, which were provided to the commission via email this afternoon. Staff provided a red line version of the draft regulations, which were responsive to the Verizon comments earlier today. Staff received the AT&T comments uh, this afternoon. Those were not considered in the draft red line. However, upon review, many of the AT&T comments were similar to the Verizon comments and are addressed in the red line version. Upon direction from the Planning Commission, staff intends to present the regulations to the applicable city council subcommittees, including the land use committee. Additional edits are anticipated to be made to the regulations through this process prior to final city council action. Tonight, we ask the Planning Commission to take public testimony and forward the draft red line version, which staff provided earlier today, to the city council for consideration. Thank you. Oh, you're muted. I see that. Uh, and with that, we will open 
uh, the public hearing for public testimony. If there's anyone in our audience that wishes to provide public testimony um, for this hearing, please um, raise your hand or make an acknowledgement and we will move you in uh, to our meeting. Looks like Kim Allen, I will allow you to talk. Thank you. And with that, Kim, you have the floor. If you would identify yourself and provide your comments. I will. Thank you very Thank you. much, Madam Chair and members of the commission. My name is Kim Allen. I'm with the Wireless Policy Group. Um, I uh, live just south of you all in Olawa. So this is kind of a, almost a hometown code change for me too, um, as the towers that are sited in Port Orchard are going to um, impact uh, my neighborhood as well, probably. Um, I am here tonight representing Verizon Wireless and I uh, wanted to start out first by thanking staff for taking such a thoughtful um, run at a very highly technical uh, code that um, many municipalities are challenged by and struggle by to, um, to do the updates. Um, the, the codes that they've produced for you are um, uh, by and large on the right track and, and, and good. Um, I did submit red line comments and I understand AT&T did as well. Um, as end users of the code, uh, we would like to make sure that the major carriers are able to um, have a workable path forward given the technology that they're currently deploying, the sizes of things that they're currently deploying. And, uh, and I, I did get Mr. Fist's red lines uh, back and thank you very much for those but I received them about 10 minutes before the meeting started. So I haven't had a chance to, to take a look through them and um, would ask that, uh, that the commission um, continued the public hearing, hold it open for additional comments so that um, in the event that um, the staff and, and you know, the wireless industry representatives can't come to a meeting of the minds that we would be able to come back and, and provide additional comment to the commission. Um, it is our intention to try to work with staff to try to um, let them know exactly what the challenges are. I, I flipped through it quickly. I saw that some of the changes that we requested had been made and some had not. So the ones that had not, we would certainly like to have the opportunity to, uh, to talk to the, the staff about. Um, you know, as, as we've all learned during this pandemic and meetings just like this, um, the need for wireless service is exploding uh, nationwide. Our networks are struggling to keep up with the number of users and the amount of data that everybody needs to, to move through that network to access all of their devices. Uh, last count I had, the average household had 13 wireless devices, and you can pretty much double that if you have a teenager in the house, I think. Um, but everything is, is being connected to our networks and the demand is huge. So we're scrambling both to update our tower networks um, so the, the tower code is very important. That is always going to be the backbone of our network because those facilities are backed up with um, generators and batteries in the event of a, a power failure and, or an emergency. But we're also introducing small wireless facilities that are on utility poles closer to the end users in residential neighborhoods and places like that um, where we can uh, offload some of the capacity that, that is being uh, being used up in those neighborhoods and, and uh, add additional capacity where people are using their phones in their homes. So uh, our, our ask tonight of, of the commission is to hold the public hearing open until your next meeting to give us an opportunity to meet with staff, discuss some of the concerns that we have about the workability and feasibility of the code and, uh, and come back to you with comments in, in the event that, that, um, that we still um, don't have agreement between um, the staff and uh, and the issues that we've presented as, as industry users of the code. So with that, thank you very much for the, your time tonight. And yes, I'm here and, to and thank questions. you. We appreciate your comments very much. And we appreciate your attendance. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to address the commission? Yes, Greg Bush. Thank you. You can bring him over and you can move Kim back. Thank you. Mr. Bush, we are prepared to for your comments now, if you would like to introduce yourself and give us your comments. Thank you. Excellent. 
Good evening. My name is Greg Bush. I'm here on behalf of at and I'm with Wireless Policy Group as well, and our offices are in Issaquah, Washington. I take it my microphone works? All right, good. So thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, at and is supportive of the city's efforts in updating the code to keep pace with the rapid change of technology. And as my colleague Kim Allen mentioned, this is a highly technical field and we really appreciate staff's hard work in digging into this and getting a first shot at the code and developing a code that is workable for all wireless providers. And like my colleague, I ask that staff continue the public hearing in order to allow some time for additional comments and red lines. Uh, we're able to work with city staff to help develop code that succeeds at three primary goals. First, code is consistent with federal law. Second, the code is workable for all wireless providers. And third, that the code promotes the city's public policy goals while remaining consistent with other sections of the code. So as mentioned earlier today, my colleague at WPG, Meredith Paps, submitted a letter on behalf of AT&T and I'll briefly go over it, but I'd like to incorporate that with reference uh, in my testimony here. So I'll go over the three key points I just mentioned. First, there have been several key changes in federal law since a similar version of the draft code was adopted in the city of Tequila. Last year, the city of Tequila updated its own code to address these uh, new developments in federal law, including removing the no longer valid significant gap test, and there's changes to portions addressing eligible facility requests under 47 CFR 1.6100, and modifications to the code to comply with federal timelines for review of applications. So these are deep, deep topics, but suffice to say that they do need addressing because it's Again, recent developments and the code could be well, uh, could be redlined to address them, uh, given additional time to address these issues. Second, regarding workability of the code for wireless providers, um, I'm available to discuss specifics after I get done going through this, but in the interest of uh, respecting the commission's time, end result is that the city's development standards, as they are right now, uh, must allow providers to construct networks using a technically feasible design. That's the core of workability. Currently, the draft code doesn't set te technically feasible height limits for common wireless site types, such as those mounted to utility poles and rooftops, and setting height limits for towers based off of maximum allowing building height, which would force exceptions for a large amount of applications. For example, for utility poles, uh, which the city lists as a preferred method of siting, uh, it only allows an additional 10 feet in height. And in order to accommodate safety regulations, we other jurisdictions allow 15 feet plus additional minimum height required to meet applicable vertical separation standards. So if there's electric wires on that pole, the separation requirement is greater if the higher the voltage. So 10 feet is just not enough to accommodate that. Third, the goal that I have is regarding promoting policy goals and maintaining consistency with the other sections of the Port Orchard Municipal Code. There are several ways for the city to promote location of wireless facilities in preferred areas, and I'll briefly mention a couple. But our comment letter suggests a few ways to encourage wireless carriers to locate there, but um, the code as it is currently drafted contains conflicting applications of policy, particularly with the table in um, the draft code 20.70.050. It's not consistent with the use table in 20.39.030 and other provisions. So it could use a pass for consistency with other areas of the code. For example, uh, P, um, Port Orchard Municipal Code 20.70.050A does not include the city's civic and institutional and public facility zones, and it's in direct conflict with a separate part of the code, which prioritizes uh, siting on city and other public property. So Adjustments are likely warranted, and uh, we recommend that additional red lines, we take some time for additional red lines. And of course, um, we always recommend including a robust definition sections. And there are a few gaps in the definitions section right now, because right now, the broader chapter only includes definitions for eligible facilities requests. So ultimately, AT&T's priorities provide stable and consistent connections to our customers, and we're always improving our network to include the latest technologies, so it's important to have code that supports the latest technology. And we look forward to continuing to serve Port Orchard residents, businesses, and first responders. So thank you for taking time to consider my comments. I know that it was really dense, so I'm able to answer questions if, uh, if you'd like. Thank you. 
And um, we appreciate, thank you for your comments, Greg. I would like to ask you, I know that Kim mentioned that she had received the red line version that um, the city put out late this afternoon. Did you receive that or perhaps it was your colleague? Um, Meredith Pabst forwarded it to me, so I have it in front of me. Okay, so have you had a chance to look at it or you just did you just get it a few minutes before the meeting started? I have had a chance to look at it and okay. my comment still stands, particularly wow. with regard to feasibility of height limitations. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to make sure that you'd had that document. So with that, are there is there anyone else? I'm not seeing anyone else in the audience. Um, so I believe both attendees have spoke. We appreciate your comments. With that, I will open it up to the Planning Commission for any comments, questions, or any concerns they have with these two codes. And you know what they're what is your pleasure? Nick? Well, I was going to see, um, I know that Jim worked on the revisions today, and I don't know if, if he had anything to add um, concerning the comments that were made or clarification that could be provided. So, Jim, if there's anything you wanted to add in terms of the revisions that were sent to the Planning Commission this afternoon, um, and I also, uh, apologies to our public commenters, I didn't realize until later this afternoon that those revisions didn't also get to you, and so I had my staff hurry and, and send those off to you. But, um, Jim, is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, the significant gap test that was removed in the red line version. Uh, many of the comments made by uh, Verizon were incorporated into the red line version. Um, most of them are acceptable. I mean, they they make a lot of sense. Um, some of the things that AT and T pointed out that were not um, part of that um, was that table. And so I think our thought is at this time to likely include that Parks and Rec and Civic and Institutional uh, District in that table so that that would remove that conflict. Um, many of the comments are really policy decisions. And so I, I think it would warrant additional discussion. Okay, again, I'm asking the Planning Commission members, do you have any comments or questions of staff on the code? Not seeing anyone raise their hand. So I will, uh, Nick. Well, I, I wanna speak to our options here because the, the commenters did ask that we um, continue this uh, hearing to a later date. Um, I think there is an alternative in this instance. And, and you know part of the reason that this code was brought up is because we had a recent uh, cell tower erected on Glenwood Road. Um, I, I forget the height, I think it was uh, 200 or more feet and it was a galvanized steel structure and the, the phones at City Hall exploded with people that were unhappy with the visual impact of that structure. And so um, I believe there is some urgency to taking action here. Um, I think one option would be for the, the Planning Commission to continue the hearing and continue to work on this directly. Another option would be to uh, forward it to the city council and recommend that the city council work directly with uh, Verizon and AT&T on additional revisions or working through this, this most recent revised draft. And, um, and also the, the city council does have the option to hold a second public hearing on the topic. And so they could choose to hold a, a public hearing. And I would just suggest that uh, city staff has no issue with, with having a second hearing with the city council. But because of all the growth that's happening in the city and the uh, number of, of dead zones in the city where you can't get good cell phone service, we do expect to see more uh, applications for cell phone towers in the, in the future. And we just wanna make sure that we don't end up with another um, eyesore. And so uh, I, I think those are the two options. And you know the difference between the two options is probably a matter of weeks. The planning commission only meets once a month, whereas the city council uh, has several meetings coming up in April where they could tackle this and potentially have it ready to approve um, before uh, the planning commission meets again. Again, are there any planning commission members with questions or comments? Seeing none, I will. <clears throat> 
I will, um, I guess, offer my questions and, and comments on it is, I believe, uh, and I appreciate very much um, the two speakers this evening. I appreciate their comments. I appreciate the thoroughness of the comments both Verizon and AT&T made to the city. And it's, I believe the Planning Commission and the city's intent to work with the providers to make sure that we have a code that provides good service to our citizens. Um, I believe that's the end goal is to provide good service to our citizens. Um, since we did have this introduced to us last month, I have been uh, very aware of cell towers of various sizes, types, designs um, as, I've, I've, as I've traveled recently. So I can really appreciate the city's desire to codify this and have our citizens know what they can expect and, and what the industry can expect when they work within the city of Port Orchard. With all of that said, I am supportive of um, Nick's suggestion that the Planning Commission, we have looked at it last month, it was introduced to us last month, and we had the public hearing this month, and our Planning Commission members have not had a lot of dialogue about it. They, they, don't, um, they haven't had a lot of questions of either Nick um, or Jim, of, but Jim and Nick have both let us know that there is this is a time sensitive matter. So I personally am supportive of the idea that the Planning Commission recommend to the city that they take this and perhaps hold the second public hearing and allow the Land Use Committee and the other appropriate committees within the City Council to work with staff and staff then has additional time to work with our commenters to come up with um, a version that meets all of our needs. Um, if that is agreeable to the other planning commission members, I would introduce a motion or introduce the words to a motion that someone else could make. Um, Tyler, do you wanna comment please? Oh, sure. I, I would support the motion to um, move this to the city council. Okay. Stephanie? I would second that motion. Okay. I have, um, this, this is what I would say, is I heard Tyler say, or I would suggest to Tyler that, um, you move to recommend that the city council adopt the April 5th, 2022 revisions to proposed chapters 20.70 and 20.72 prepared by city staff in response to the public comments received in a timely manner as provided to the planning commission and that the city council provide further consideration to these comments and suggestions as part of the council's review process. Was that your motion? Yes, it was. And Stephanie, that was your second? Second. Okay. So we have a motion and a second um, on, that has been seconded on the floor to recommend to the city council that this move forward and that they um, continue deliberations on the comments we have received to expedite and to keep this process moving forward. Um, that's the motion on the floor. Is there anyone who would be voting against that motion? I will ask a second time. Is there anyone who would be voting against that motion? Hearing none, the motion is approved with unanimous consent. And with that, we will move on down our agenda. And I do want again to express appreciation to our um, members of the audience in your comments this evening. And uh, Nick? Um, for our commenters, um, Mr. Bush and Ms. Allen, 
Um, I just wanted to give you the dates of the upcoming council meetings and the committee meetings where this is likely to be discussed. Um, there is a city council work study meeting on the 19th of April at 6.30 p.m. Uh, there is also a land use committee meeting on the 20th of April at, uh, I believe, 4 p.m. Is that right, Josie? And um, whether it goes to the full city council work study or only goes to land use is to be determined, but maybe pencil those times and dates on your calendar. And um, feel free to reach out to me between now and then, and Jim and I are happy to work through uh, some of these, um, some of the policy issues uh, where, where council may have some discretion and also some of the technical legal issues with you um, between now and, and when this goes to city council. So thank you. Okay, is there anything else for the, um, the good of the commission this evening? I Josie? believe, no, there we go. I just wanted to touch base with everybody about um, the APA membership and laptops, should you want them for your service as a planning commissioner. Um, I received um, information from a handful of you, but I'm convinced that there are more of you interested in a the APA membership. Um, and so I encourage you to email me your contact information so I can sign everybody up. Um, and then also, uh, if you're interested in a city laptop um, for work for your service as a planning commissioner, please reach out to me and we can get something set up as well. I will just add, um, as a, for the good of the order, I know at the last meeting, which was the first meeting I had attended, there was talk about um, the Jurassic Parliament educational opportunities that were um, available to us. And so I looked at it and it was a very thorough menu of um, classes available, but they did have just um, a real brief, I got um, an email a day for like five days or seven days and it was a really quick read, but it also was a very good refresher. And there was also opportunities within those emails if you wanted to dive deeper into any particular subject you could. So I would just wanted the commission to know that I did that. I found it useful. It was $17. I paid for it, but I'm assuming the city would um, cover that expense. So, and I don't know how that piece happens, um, but again, uh, if you would contact Josie, and again, it was just a really quick read, but I thought it was a, a great refresher for myself. Is there anything else for the, Nick? Well, and concerning payment for the class, if, if anyone wants to sign up for a class, um, you could either submit for reimbursement or uh, I would be able to just pay for that on the department's procurement card and get it uh, coded to the planning commission's budget. So um, just let me know and I'll, I'll, I'd be happy to enroll you in, in one of those classes and get it all set up. So is there anything else um, for the good of the commission this evening? Hearing none, um, we will stand adjourned and I hope everyone has a great rest of your evening and we will see you next month. Thank you, Beck. Thank you, Beck. Good night. Bye, everyone, Bye. take care. Thank you.